I was talking to an HVAC contractor the other day, and we were talking about how when they install thermostats, there are certain settings that they just either leave off or they set it a certain way without even consulting the homeowner, without even consulting you. And in his defense, I used to do the same thing at my company. There were certain settings that we would just either leave off or for whatever reason, we were going to set them a certain way to avoid a callback from the homeowner, to avoid confusion or or just simply because we thought it should be a certain way. Some of those settings, I think you should know that they exist. I think you as the homeowner, the owner of that thermostat should have a choice in all of this. So one of the thermostats that I've fallen in love with, we're gonna talk throughout this video on, is the Sensi Touch 2 and the Sensi Light. Those two thermostats, I'm gonna be showing some clips of those, some ins and outs. But a lot of these settings I'm about to cover, cover an array of the thermostats, an array of the smart thermostats, thermostats and maybe even the ones that aren't considered so smart, right? Just thermostats in general. And so we're not talking about your normal run of the mill settings. Hey, I'm going to set the, it to run this way, or I'm going to set up the Wi-Fi. I'm talking about some of the settings that if you know about some of these settings, you actually might save some money in the end. So let's dive into it. Five settings on those thermostats that you should know about. The first one being a lot of contractors, even if you have the ability to run a schedule in that thermostat, they will just turn that off. A lot of times, to be honest, my own company, when I had that, we would have customers that maybe they were a little older, maybe they weren't as tech savvy, and we did the same. We would just turn that setting off unless they specifically asked for it. A lot of times, that was a callback waiting to come, that the homeowner would call us at 10 p.m. at night and say, my thermostat keeps going to this degree temperature and I didn't set it that way. And a lot of times that was because the schedule was running in there and they had not set up the schedule to run the way they wanted it to run. So that would be the first one. I would say if you do want to run a schedule and most of those thermostats, if you do have the ability, if it's a programmable thermostat, you might just have to go into the settings and turn that on. Some thermostats, you can do it in the programming of the thermostat itself. Some thermostats, you might have to connect to, to Wi-Fi and then do it through that or both. Some thermostats, you can do it either way. Now, I will say, don't turn it on unless you plan on using it because it will give you problems. If you turn it on and you're not turning on, say, the permanent hold or even temporary hold at times, then you could end up having the issues that I was just talking about. You've turned the schedule on, you didn't set it up properly, and then now you're in the middle of the night and you're hot or cold because it's gone back to running the schedule that's in there. And to be honest with you, the factory settings are goofy as heck to me. I cannot believe sometimes when I go into the schedule that the factory has set, I don't know why they don't just set up two or four periods and have them all set at 72. They'll have one setting at like 78 degrees and one at 65 degrees. I mean, it's just crazy, but I digress. The second setting that I think you should know as a homeowner, someone that owns this thermostat is probably a whole set of settings. It's not just one setting. A lot of smart thermostats have an array of settings in there. Things like proximity or geofencing or other technologies to either A, know if you're home or B, run a certain way to save you money. Maybe it'll run a certain way during peak times. Maybe it'll run a certain way during the night versus day, whatever those settings are. I had a homeowner just comment on my videos the other day and say, well, my contractor should tell me this about mini splits. It was on a mini split video. I don't disagree with that. I think a good contractor is going to take a moment and explain to you and say, oh yeah, this is how this operates. This is how that operates. But even if they don't or do, I think you as the owner of that new piece of hardware, just like if you buy a car, none of us do it, but you probably should read the manual on it, right? I'll flip through it to learn certain things like how many quarts of oil it should hold. But a thermostat, there's settings that you're not aware of. I would challenge you to go in there and read. Just if nothing else, skim through the basic setup or whatever the verbiage is, the quick setup guide. Go through all of that and see what are some of the settings 
that they never said a word to you. The contractor never said, hey, do you want this option? See what those settings are. And that's my challenge to you if you're watching this. And my second challenge to you would be to click that like and subscribe button. The algorithm has not been liking me lately. And I think there's maybe a couple of reasons for that. But if you get any value out of my content, please hit the like and subscribe button. It'll just help us out so much. Our third setting I want to go over is there is something in there called heat droop and backup stage timer. Now there's different verbiages for that, but basically we're going to be setting the droop before the auxiliary heat turns on. And you can sometimes adjust that in some thermostats. You can go in there and say, Hey, I don't want the auxiliary to turn on unless there's a large difference between the ambient temperature in the room and the set point of the thermostat. If you expand that, you may have days where it gets super cold outside and it has to get super cold in that room before the auxiliary heat kicks on and reaches temperature, but you are going to save energy looking at settings like that. Now, I'm not going to get into what those settings should be because there's different opinions on that, but I do think you should know about it because a lot of contractors will put it at comfort or zero, meaning if that temperature drops even a degree, those auxiliary strips are coming on or your backup heat is turning on and you're going to consume a lot more electricity or gas based on how they set it up. In fact, the contractor I'm talking about, this is the setting, the contractor I was talking to last week, he said, well, yeah, we just leave it on comfort every time. We don't pay the electric bill and I don't want to call back. Unless that homeowner calls us and complains about their electric bill, I'm going for comfort or zero degrees every time. I'm not setting up the heat droop. And the backup stage timer is just a delay. If you have the heat droop, say, set at two degrees, let's say it drops below two degrees and you're ready to run auxiliary heat, that heat stage timer will give that heat pump, if it is a heat pump, a chance or whatever your first stage heat is, it'll give it a chance before it brings on other stages. It'll give it, let's say you set it at 30 minutes, it's going to give that heat pump 30 minutes to try to reach set point before it brings on any backup heat. The fourth setting would be auto changeover or some sort of verbiage similar to that. A lot of the brands call it different things, but essentially any sort of auto changeover, temperature ranges, things like that, you are basically turning on the ability for that thermostat to run in heat and AC. If it gets above a certain set point, it's going to bring on AC, drop it down to that temperature. If it gets below whatever that set point is, then the thermostat will bring the heat on and bring it back up in that range. And those ranges, some thermostats, you can even change that, what the minimum range could be. Most of them, I would say, is around three degrees. So let's say you could set it at 70 72 and 69. And if it drops below or above those set points in that range, then it'll bring on the mode that it needs to bring on. I think that that setting for me specifically where I live here in Virginia, there's two times of the year that I'm running heat at night and AC during the day. We get all kinds of temperatures sometimes. And if you live in the part of the country where you do see days throughout the year where it gets a little warm during the day and gets a little cool at night, it might be nice having that setting on. A lot of contrast Contractors, they don't even give the ability, they don't give the homeowner a chance to say yes or no to that. They'll just turn it off and the homeowner never knows that that is even something that is a possibility with their thermostat. And finally, number five is some thermostats, you can install an indoor temperature sensor, put it somewhere in the house. If you're having comfort issues or you're having some sort of problems where you want to take temperature readings from another room or another part of the house, you can install that temperature sensor and have that thermostat Instead of having to relocate that thermostat and run wiring all over the house, and sometimes that's easier said than done, you can put a temperature sensor somewhere else in the house, have the thermostat operate off the temperature in that zone or that room. I can tell you countless stories where having that option, having that setting turned on and having a temperature sensor somewhere else in the home would have alleviated a lot of problems. Now, let's be honest, having a different sensor doesn't fix ductwork issues. It doesn't even fix zoning issues, but there are times of the day, let's say if you had a thermostat located in your living room and you built a fire in your fireplace, you don't want that thermostat to get hot and then the rest of the house to get cold because of that. So you could put a sensor elsewhere, allow that sensor 
system to operate off of the sensor and have less issues. Did I miss one? Have you had a contractor leave a setting off or not check with you on what you want it to be set at and you think they should have? Love to hear about that in the comment section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about if you have a system that's in AC mode, but it's blowing hot, why that might be. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.